The Hood River County Transportation District strives to honor this land and its traditional native stewards, past, present, and future, and to embody a commitment to cultural equity and reconciliation, ecological conservation, and sustainability. I hereby call this regular meeting of the Hood River County Transportation District Board of Directors to order at 4.03 p.m. And um, the clerk to take roll call, so this is just for right now. Happy meeting. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Laura Dunn. Here. Letty Moretti. Here. Daryl Roberts. Here. Dr. Megan Levy. Here. Greg Pack. Here. Jeff Petridge. Present. Megan Rainey. Here. We have a quorum. All right, so our first order of business are approving the minutes, um, which are in the packet. Um, I have a few changes to suggest. Does anyone else have changes they want us to consider? Yes. Um, could I could I go ahead with a few suggestions? Yeah. Um, under uh, item three, uh, the public hearing at the top it says in the first paragraph one comment was received. Um, clarification: I wanted to suggest that we um, amend that to say that a written or an email comment was received from um, Ms. Tracy. I know. I think we misspelled her name there in the second paragraph. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look the same as what I remember from the email. Um, and then there's a uh, in the second. So to correct that in the second paragraph, we'll respond to her Mrs. Tomshoy letter. To, we just need to oh yeah, that is that. wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then Megan, um, I wasn't sure that this third paragraph. Summarize quite correctly what you were saying that you like free fixed draft transit. Does that does that look like your comments accurately? Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then it seems like there was one other. Oh, way down um, in uh, on page five. No, no, sorry. Top of page six, the motion um, by Bridget to approve uh, past policy for the directors and their um, members of their household. And we we have the word dependents in there, but we discussed that and, and just decided that just household members was, was what we intended. So, um, yeah, the goal was to match whatever the was being right, just being that staff. my husband's not my dependent, but right. I'm he's that understand. he's, uh, yeah. So if we strike dependents. And then at the bottom of that same page, um, there's a description of the, the, the conversation with um, Caroline Snell. And then after that, it follows, Lara asked to see their pictures at the board meetings. And it's not clear who we're referring to. Uh, so that's an employee. <laughs> As I was following the yeah, yeah. video, so just, just the adding, it's I know, just so you could explain. Lara asked to see pictures of board of, of the employees. The employees, the employees. Yeah, 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 exactly. For the month. Yes. Yeah. Employees. Um. Sorry, I read this kind of closely. Page seven at the bottom. Yeah, um. It, on a. City of Hood River coordination update. Um, he further explained that the new downtown pass, which we would provide to the city, and uh, isn't the downtown pass for em employees yeah. employees who work downtown? Not to, but maybe we provide it to the city. Okay, okay, so okay. So my, to add maybe to disperse to disperse to downtown yeah. workers or distribute or distribute. Right? Uh, and then I think um, at the top of page nine uh, that Megan Larry's name is misspelled. It's M-E-G-H-A-N, just so we can uh, distinguish our two Megans. Let's get that right. 
that. Huge distinction. <laughs> right. And, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it matters. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. I can uh, make those oh, um, and then have Daryl sign if the board wants to approve with your suggested amendments. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have any other changes they want us to consider? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with the changes that Laura stated. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. And uh, we're moving on to public comment, but it sounds like someone's asking for the meeting ID, so it's a good time for us to pause and then uh, we invite the public. Recording in progress. How often does she do that? <laughs> the automated, oh, this meeting is. The, no, um, just once. Oh. While it's being recorded. And then when it goes off, it will say this the recording has stopped. Okay. <laughs> They're my favorite. So good. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. <laughs> they should really not be put near me. Thank you. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Greg. Right. 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 So it's going to be the COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I actually was say, I said okay. Greg, but I meant Jeff. And then Greg, you can have some if, you're, if you want to scoop down. and. <laughs> okay, we've got a few more attendees sign in. Um, so I'll move ahead to public comment. Now's the opportunity for public comment regarding the discussion item that's not on the agenda. Um, would anyone like to comment at this time? Um, this is for the public. Uh, it looks like it looks like these are our regular yeah mm -hmm. team. Valerie and um, Teresa are the only ones that are not um, specific to okay. Okay, so it looks like um, there are no public comments, so we'll move on to, oh, we have two of our departing board members here. This is, uh, I uh, wanted to take a moment to recognize um, Bridget Bailey and Elazar Reyes, and thank you for your service, and we have a little um, plaque to present each of you as just a small token of our appreciation um, for your dedication and commitment to um, I want to make sure I hand this out the right way. Thank oh. you, Bridget. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All of you. Thank you. I, I enjoyed learning about this um, wonderful system that is unfolding for our community. And I want to continue serving as a volunteer on a diversity committee, if one is called. Um, and at that time, I commit to. Um, researching the schedule and taking um, Kat to the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate it too. I've had the opportunity of working for Kat as well, not just being on the board. So it's been a really cool experience. It's been yeah. really cool. So, met lots of friends. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to be uh, considered as well for, to, to be to help out and whatever you guys need. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you both you. so Thank much you. for your yes. service and, and your contributions. Yes. Yeah, and thank you for the passes. I will um, work on having my um, family use the cat as much as possible mm -hmm. and sharing the news with their friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to listen to a little bit of the meeting. Yes, yes, you're you're welcome. Welcome. Of course, okay. and you're welcome every time. Every right. time. <laughs> um, I will say that there were times today when I was just checking to make sure that I had the right day. And I wasn't sure if our website was behaving properly because when I typed in agenda, um, maybe somebody was working on the page or something, but I want to double check okay. that we're always, um, so if somebody wanted to join our meeting, that it was a little more clear. It was very easy to find the, the first time I logged in this morning, it was very easy to find. So something may have happened during the day. Um, 
and I wasn't able to get, and when I entered search term for agenda, some of the old meetings came up, but I couldn't find today's. Hmm. Okay. Well, so we'll look at that. Yeah, Thank just you. because I wouldn't want anybody else to. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll give it a, a thorough because, going yeah, over. And I'm not sure whether the if a member of the public wants to so join if the yeah, link is live. That's what I was going to check. Okay. Right. And oh, the website. So I don't know. I don't know if it's live. Right. Sitting there. Right. Cat bus stop. For the. The board member page. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Catbus.org forward slash board. Forward slash board. Yeah. And then the password is I, I love, love capital C capital A capital T. Um, bus twenty twenty. But I think it was working perfectly yeah, early this morning. Sure. For okay. those of you watching from <laughs> afar, we're just uh, we're logging on to um, board the, board the board page. <clears throat> on the website. Okay. Um, shall we move to the next item? And John will be swearing in our new board members. Board. Okay, uh, just as required by article um, XB, section three of the Oregon Constitution, any uh, board member elected to uh, Special district needs to take an oath of office, and I've provided an oath of office to uh, Megan and Jeff, and then for Carol and Greg. I'm sorry, Greg and Megan and Daryl will do yours uh, verbally online. So um, what I will do is I'll just read, and then if you guys can just uh, say, hey, hold up your hand, hold up your hand, <laughs> I. And say your name. Jeffrey Daryl and Greg. Do solemnly swear that I support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Oregon, the laws thereof, and the policies of the I would do it slower. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, do just do it. break it up. Yeah. <laughs> of the Hood River County. No, no, start it. Start it here. Let me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, do you solemnly swear. Do you solemnly, solemnly swear, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Oregon. The Constitution of the State of Oregon. Of the state of Oregon. Yeah. The laws thereof. The laws thereof. Laws thereof. And the policy of and the, the policy of Hood River County Transportation District. Hood River policy County Tra policy of the Hood River County Transportation District. <laughs> and, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of a director according to the best of my ability. And I will faithfully discharge, discharge the duties of director to the best of my abilities. So help me, so help me God. God. So help me God. Help me God. <laughs> you got to break it in chunks. Yeah. 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 All right. Congratulations. And if I, I'll, I'll email the oath of office to um, Greg, Daryl, and Megan if you could sign, and then we'll have Laura sign for our record. Um, and also, we just wanted to remind all of you, um, I'm assuming that that you got, and maybe we have already gotten responses to, but that you um, have to sign an annual conflict of interest um, sheet. So if you haven't done that, we do need you to put it in our files, just a federal requirement. Is that mine, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You got well, that was okay for me to just change the title. Could you, Patty? Yes. Could you maybe have a few blank ones of those at the front desk? Because I came in the other day to do that, and uh, nobody, the person at the front desk didn't know anything about it. And oh, okay, sorry. Uh, yes, I, I I didn't realize that that was what you were looking for. So yes, I will. We'll make sure we we have oh, some for you. Your I'll be there, uh, after <laughs> That's the only thing I can't remember. Chocolate and chocolate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, John, and congratulations to our new board members. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. 
Um, we'll go to the financial report from Teresa. Go ahead, Teresa. Sorry, my mouse didn't cooperate. Um, well, we ended the year well. Uh, cash on hand at the end of the year was uh, a million four. There uh, is approximately, that's about 368,000 more than last year. There's, uh, a, I'm gonna just kind of jump to the main headings. Revenue uh, earned was a million seven. Budget was 2.5. And so that's a negative variance of 703,000. That was made up of in, with three main savings areas. Uh, cost of goods was made up with 130,000 less than budget. Personnel costs were approximately 209 less than budget, 219 less than budget, excuse me. And the capital purchase that is postponed until next year was 600,000. So uh, net income, of course, is uh, ends up with 250,000 and the there was after the published financials were sent to you, there's an additional amount of grant revenue that can be accrued and that's gonna push net income to about 3,000, excuse me, 300,000. This is a draft of the June financials. These are not your financial number, your end of the year financial numbers. We have the audit scheduled. So I just wanna remind you that there are several transactions that are gonna post that are end of year book transactions. Uh, the first one that is uh, fairly large usually is depreciation. There's a crude payroll that re represents the final payroll of the year, which is a split payroll in the case of CAT because they pay every other week. Um, then there's a crude PTO and that will be the amount of PTO in the bank that is earned but not yet used by all employees. And uh, then John will also take a look at the fixed, John is the auditor, excuse me. And he'll take a look at fixed assets. And Richard, Richard is the auditor, Richard Winkle. Thank you, um, right. apologies. <laughs> so there'll be some, some final end of year changes. And then Daryl, I did receive your email earlier in the week with the question around PTO. Um, did I answer that question uh, clearly for you now? Um, well, I got something from John. I think, I think it said that it's adjusted at the end of each year. Is that right? It's going to tie to the actual bank. Um, occasionally, if, if there's been an employee that comes and goes in the middle of the year, it will change. But uh, there's definitely a tie to the financial. Uh, the balance sheet will tie to that last payroll report of the year. Okay. Um, there were a couple of other questions. I Patty, remember. Yeah, Patty addressed the rest of the questions in your email. It was around uh, accounts payable and some. Um, okay. You had some office supply questions and uh, uh, why we were over. And I looked at it more thoroughly and um, we need to transfer. There was some money that got placed into the office supply and should have been put into marketing and we're, we're, we're working with Teresa and her staff to, to make those changes. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Teresa. Um, so we'll move on to the uh, resolution item. And um, so as to item, 8A for our bylaws were to elect um, new officers each year. The officer positions are chair, vice chair, and secretary treasurer. We combine those roles. And um, I asked John to send out a poll to conduct this election. And thank you, each of you, for voting. And um, Jim, John will announce who is next. Uh, the results of the election is that uh, Laura Dunn um, is the majority to be chair, uh, Lady Moradi as vice chair and Daryl Roberts as secretary treasurer. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to, or can I get someone to make a motion to elect the slate of officers? 
I make a motion to elect this awesome story to Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you, Greg. All right. Um, does anyone have any changes or questions to consider? All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And chair votes aye. Um, uh, let's move on to the item 8B. And John, please leave this item. Oh, yes, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. Uh, this is the selection of the auditor. As required in the bylaws, the board is to approve a financial auditor to audit the district financial records for the previous fiscal year ending June 30. Um, in 2017, we had a contract with Richard Winkle to provide the, perform the audits for fiscal years 18, 19, and 20. We did do a request for proposals for the upcoming uh, next uh, three to five fiscal years. Unfortunately, we did not get any respondents. So we did ask Richard if he would be able to do the audit for this upcoming fiscal year. And in January, we intend to obtain additional quotations or send out a proposal for an auditor for the upcoming five years. Um, he's proposing to do this for $9,500, which is $1,000 more than last year's audit. And uh, we request that the board authorize the sole source procurement with Richard Winkle to perform the audit for fiscal year 21. Question, Madam Chair. How long has the uh, current auditor been in place? Uh, since uh, 2018. 2018. Um, and um, uh, it, it's a good question, Jeff. Um, we uh, <laughs> um, should have started earlier on the um, uh, to get a new auditor in place, and um, think that's why the responses were so low. Um, not um, just most people have sort of already set the calendar of things that their activities that they're working on. So it, we think. That going out in January of next year um, would be the appropriate thing to do, and um, that also offers the opportunity for the board, if there are particular firms that they'd like to work with, um, that they can offer that opportunity up as well. The, um, is there? Oh, go ahead. The basis for the question was knowing that sometimes smaller communities you will see the same cycle of businesses or people, and there may be oversights or not not as much oversight sometimes because it just gets in a routine okay. almost everything's fine and having another set of eyes really makes a bigger difference i've noticed when i was in cascade locks on the mm -hmm. budget committee when we had a different auditor come in so I, I just, that was the question i'm glad that you mentioned that we did that um in 2018 mm -hmm. because of that very matter and did come out with mm -hmm. some significant deficiencies um that year so mm -hmm. we're uh we're well aware um uh, yeah, so, we, that, so that's that. so pardon. So that's the reason for asking for additional bids, just to because we want to have a fresh set of eyes if possible. If, it, if we can find those um, suitable, and the lowest bidder. Well, I, I think for this year, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. But mm -hmm. subsequently, that is um, that's a, a good standard. Um, okay. I totally uh, support that. Okay, hundred percent. Okay. I also think it's a nice opportunity for you guys to transition if. If we're going to a new executive director as well, it's an opportunity for the executive director and the board to make that selection together and feel comfortable mm -hmm. with that. So, and Patty, historically, we've had very few um, companies actually place a bid for our transportation district, right? Um, we have had a couple of local firms. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple of Portland firms that have done that. Um, Richard was the lowest. Mm -hmm. um, and um, has been relatively easy for us to work with. Um, but uh, I think that having a local firm wouldn't be a bad idea. Thank you. Okay, so um, John is asking for our, or the staff is asking for us to approve um, this plan. To make a motion to approve the selection of auditor as listed in the memo that was by John, our executive. Assistant as executive director. Okay, can someone second? I'll second. Okay, anyone have any changes or other comments to consider? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Megan, I don't think we're hearing from you, Megan Larrabee. Oh.
You know what? I had my muted. Sorry. I just wanted to keep background noise down. Okay, no worries. I just wanted to be sure we weren't overlooking your input. Um, and do you approve that motion? Yes. Aye. You can even just do a thumbs up if you want. <laughs> okay. All right. And chair votes aye. Um, so we'll move on to item 8C and John, please leave. Yes, yeah, so this is selection of general counsel as required in the bylaws, the board of directors to approve general counsel to support the board in the district. And the district does have an attorney to assist with labor negotiations and labor related issues. However, there's not been an attorney to assist with general issues that may arise from time to time. We did seek uh, quotes and qualifications from four attorneys capable of providing this work. And uh, from the review of the qualifications of quotes, uh, we are recommending uh, Ruben B. Cleveland of Van Cotton and Cleveland LLC to be uh, considered by this board. He's presently the city attorney for the city of Cascade Locks, as well as the school district, parks and recreation district, and library district. And he's proposing to do this for $175 per hour on an on call basis. And now uh, we are just asking for a board approval to execute an on call agreement with Van Cotton and Cleveland to perform general counsel services for the district. Motion? Not a motion, no but it, um, statement is related to a non-conflict of interest. I did work with Ruben in the city of Cascade Locks, outstanding attorney, he worked well for us. There is no relationship there, but I do would recommend him as a person to work with because I sat next to him okay. for about five years and he was very good to us. Okay. Well, I guess if we're disclosing, and he's, he's, uh, lives down the street from me and my daughter babysits for his kids. So. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a conflict of interest, but I can vouch for him as well. <laughs> Um, I make a motion. Yeah. Okay. A motion. To approve the uh, contract with, uh, where is that? Ruben? Was it? Victor. Cleveland. Uh, Brad Cotton and. Van Cotton and Cleveland Ruben. LLC mm -hmm. attorneys. Uh, can someone second? We'll second. We'll second. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone have any other comments or changes? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair Woods, aye. All right, moving on to item 8D, John, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so this was an added item. Uh, this is the request to create a gorge day pass. Sorry, it's a cat day pass. Cat it's, day pass. It's not a gorge okay. day pass. A cat day pass. Okay. Um, this cat day pass would cost $15. It's priced in between the one-way trip of uh, Columbia Gorge Express and a round trip uh, cost for that. It's going to be geared more towards the tourist market and give them, give passengers unlimited access on cap transit buses only. For one day. For one day. For one day. For one day. How do you keep track of that? Um, if we, we can actually token transit. On their token transit, yeah, it'll, it'll just it'll, be for active. Be, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, that'd be very useful. We have received requests from passengers as well as bus operators requesting mm -hmm. that we create a day pass. Yes. Um, travel Portland, Travel Oregon both sure, um, yeah. suggested that that would be um, an added benefit. Great. Yeah. I, I, I wondered whether it might be a disincentive to get the Gorge Pass, but it being, I mean, people tourists, might weigh, so, you know, yeah, well, it's yeah. half the price, and if I want, if I'm ever going to come again, I'll just get the Gorge Pass, but that's great. After their one day, then they'll want the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a nice idea. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the cat one day pass. Second. The other advantage for us is that um, if somebody gets on at um, Gateway and goes to Multnomah Falls, a lot of times they want to go on to Hood yeah, River yeah. and would actually have to pay twice. So it would be $20 yeah. instead oh, of just right. the 10 oh, yeah, um, yeah. that so they would otherwise pay. So, all the time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> not just in this market, but in yeah. all of the markets. So, the US, yeah, so it's an opportunity for us yeah. to allow somebody to continue to stop and then continue on without having to worry about whether they paid and yeah. how much they paid. And anyway, sorry. It's a good improvement. <laughs> yeah. yes. All right. Any other comments or changes? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Um, so oh. what I, I would recommend is that we do it as a promotional pass and see how well it works. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then we can you can assess whether you want to make it um, permanent after six months. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, let's move on to operations manager, Ty. Can you go ahead? Oh, wait, it looks like we have a, something in the chat there, John, at the bottom. Uh, thank you, everyone. That's mm -hmm. Teresa. Yeah, sounds okay. like Teresa's just leaving. Okay, okay Ty, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry, let me pull everything up. Sorry, my internet connection isn't the best of my videos, uh, not working. But it's good to see everybody in the boardroom. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Back in person. With candy, with chocolate. Yeah, with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I'm not touching over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really yeah. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. willpower. Willpower, I'm telling you. Okay, Ty, take it away. Yeah, sorry, it's waiting. The share drive's taking a minute to open this thing. I want to read it right off of it. Okay. Where's Amy? Okay. Uh, she's on vacation. Oh, yeah, for her. All right. <laughs> are, you, are you guys ready now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So safety score stayed largely the same. We had zero crashes. Our drive time went down just a little bit. Um, our percentage over speed limit went up just a little bit. Our miles driven down just a little bit. Uh, the harsh events um, up, but again, these are each reviewed by either myself, Jeff, and a safety committee member. And I think all but two of them were determined to not actually be harsh events and kind of uh, false triggers as it's not a, not a perfect system. Uh, for the on-time performance stayed largely the same. Um, we increased about 1% across the, across the board. Um, and I'm actually kind of surprised the, the fixed route time was so high because we had a lot of uh, traffic in Portland and a couple of days with accidents on 84 where we were uh, significantly delayed and actually had three three vehicles running the Columbia Gorge Express to stay on on two vehicle schedule at some points. Um, due to the very hot weather we didn't run the Gillig's as much so our gas usage went uh, significantly up our gas miles per gallon stayed the same diesel usage went down, the miles per gallon stayed the same, and the fuel cost went significantly up. Um, we had zero major vehicle repairs and zero customer complaints. Um, we did have quite a few parts purchased for the motor coach buses, but they are not being listed as repairs on there because they are still not fixed. Um, we haven't had the driver meeting to announce the uh, driver of the month because we just started new routes and we usually do the let the bid go for about a week and then do the driver meeting so they can provide feedback on the new routes and we can make any adjustments. We did hire a new field, uh, excuse me, new weekend field supervisor, um, Chelsea. So she started this last weekend and has been doing an amazing job. All the drivers have been, been very supportive of the decision. Um, ridership increased almost across the board. Dial a ride has been, sorry, did somebody have something? Well, I, I was just going to say that, um, Chelsea is filling a position that we had open. It wasn't, it isn't a new position. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I mean, it is, it is, and she's filling a supervisor position. We changed it from a field supervisor to a specific weekend field supervisor. So she's responsible for the weekends, but yes, it is a, is a replacement position um hi yes i do have a question for you on the ridership uh -huh. sheet could you possibly include maybe it'd have to be on a separate sheet um the the numbers for the same month as the pre on the previous year so that we can compare uh ridership say in june of this year to june of last year and see if the corresponding times are increasing or not? Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you want um, breaking it out might be a little bit difficult, but doing the overall, so just saying like we had this total number of riders, 
per month um, would be well, something you could easily do, or do you want it broken out by service? Um, if it can be done broken out, that'd be great. But if that's you know going to create a lot of extra work, then yeah, just the total numbers. Okay, I mean, going going forward, it shouldn't be a problem. Just since last year was real weird, and we're kind of running integrated services and very limited service, it would be hard to to break them all out. But oh, okay. Um, well, off the top of my head, it would be hard to break out. I'd have to actually look at it and see what kind of data we have because we, we were still using our old um, dispatch software at that point, which the reporting on that one was not nearly as, as uh, good as it was on this okay. one for the most part. Well, just, yeah. just something so we could compare, you know, how, how this year's going to last year. Um, just I'm, like a 13 month rule. And yeah. uh, we're happy to do that. I am. Um, we, uh, Mar March through uh, April, we weren't running Columbia Gorge Express at all last year, or actually mid-March through, uh, through the 1st of June. So we just would have started the Columbia Gorge Express up again, and that was just um, with one bus, not uh, the two buses that we have on it now. So- well, um, Maybe that's a reason to try to break it out, and then you could just show um, routes that weren't running last year as you know not yeah. applicable or something like that. Yep, happy to do that. I think for like trend analysis, like we've talked about, it's very good information for the board, and everybody else can disseminate. If there are the naysayers out there that say, "Well, you're not serving," well, actually, we did increase, or if it's true that we didn't serve in certain routes, that, that there's analytic, there's data that should proves that one way or the other. Sure. So it may be a little more front end work for Ty right now, but I think longer term would be better, better to answer questions later. Yeah, we're happy to do that. I um, I just wanted to let you know that it might be a little more complicated just because we- it was COVID. Yeah, it was so COVID. It'll we'll be, <laughs> COVID we'll be low. Yeah, <laughs> COVID year. Um, but we are um, have been working on providing um, detailed um, information on our ridership over the years, so you will be able to see a trendular data. Um, we did find out that our <laughs> 2019 ridership was um, entered in wrong into the National Transit Database. About um, about 7,000 riders were miscounted, mm -hmm. and we are going back over. That's all documented. The ridership is actually documented in the ridership in our board packets. But we want to go back in and um, and give you the exact amount. As I have explained in the past, um, before we moved to this new program, um, riders were that we, we had drivers. Um, we were getting ridership information from the software when a ride was scheduled, but we were also adding on fixed route services, mm -hmm. and the drivers were required to hand count those rides. Um, what we found is that riders, that <coughs> drivers were supposed to hand count everybody that they were getting on the bus. And a lot of drivers were not hand counting the dial ride riders. So it's a matter of us now looking at both and trying to match them up and also um, matching them up with the fare revenue because the fare revenue was significantly higher than in the ridership so um <clears throat> so there are some discrepancies there and we just need to look at them more closely i think we started to do that detailed analysis in the board packet and we just want to um, double check and make sure that everything is copacetic the other piece of ridership um, that didn't get in was the trolley ridership which was uh, um, about four thousand rides um uh, that year so um, we've got a different system in place, uh, and we think moving forward, our, our ridership numbers will be more accurate. And even in 2020, we think the ridership numbers were more accurate than they were in um, FY19, just so you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so to not go into too much detail on this, this ridership um, piece, basically we stop doing the dog mountain thing which was 7.5 boarding rides per hour and our boarding rides per hour for all of our um routes altogether still still went up by by 0.1 per hour um 
that being said, I'm um, happy to work with Daryl and whoever else to kind of get a new a new format for this. Maybe move it to an Excel sheet off of a, a Word document, something that's easier to do some analysis and comparison with uh, with previous previous routes. So we can we can make it whatever you guys want it to be and something that's easy to look at for everyone. Okay, thank you. Yeah, is there anyone else that wants to be specifically involved in that or do you want me to spearhead it, send it to Daryl? Daryl, you can pass it along to anybody else and we can take it from there. Sounds good. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns? Is this the end of your report? That is the end of the operations report, yes. But I'd ask the question of Patty and John, and you mentioned fuel prices. And I asked who, Patty, who do you go through fuel for? Um, well, actually, Ty probably knows more, but um, we go through Jubits um, and also um, Carson Oil. Okay. Um, and we used to go through the county, but we found that those two providers were actually less expensive. The, the, the conversation I had last time with you was that would you check with seeing if you partner with ODOT because of their volume ability, they can supply diesel and or uh, gas and use their pumps in the loops. We did that in Cascade Locks mm -hmm. and the health fire department save on fuel costs and the other part of that larger fuel purchase. Um, I, I believe that the county it does use ODOT um, uh, or, or gets it through ODOT somehow. Anyway, Ty, do you know any more about that? Uh, not specifically, I could ask Valerie, or is she still on here about that? But um, I do know that, so we, we use Carson here and it's a Carson owned location. And then Jubitz is a much larger company and they just happened to see our buses and wanted our, um, wanted our business. They reached out to us, asked what price we were getting. And I sent them the price. They said, there's no way this is correct. That's the best deal we've ever seen. And they talked to Carson and it's, like oh it's because Carson owns that actual location and the fuel so we 90% of the time fuel at the Carson location it's only Carson only gives us that price at this location in Hood River because they physically own it if we have to fuel on route or fuel any other reason an emergency then we use the Jubitz cards because they give us the same price anywhere in the in the state Ty, can you follow up with Jeff um, after you've talked with ODOT about their pricing here and see um, see whether there is an advantage for us to, to consider that? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send uh, Valerie an email right now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, so we'll move on to the executive director's report. So Patty and John, go ahead. So, um, we uh, have finally implemented the Gorge Pass. Yay, yay. Um, the first week out of the gate, um, without a whole lot of marketing, we um, had sold 100 um, passes. Um, and that was just those on token transit. We um, have since heard that um, the, the initial um, 10 uh, passes that we gave to White Salmon has, has been sold out um, so that we have to um, provide them more. Um, physical cards. We also had sold um, a total of, of 50 physical cards. So um, in addition to the 100. Um, so uh, we feel like it's uh, moving in the right direction. We feel um, um, we're also seeing a significant increase in revenue because of the um, Colby Gorge Express. More people are riding now. Um, most most people are are using the one day ticket rather than Gorge Pass, um, so um, financially the the revenue is is doing well. We do not have to share revenue on the individual tickets, so mm -hmm. that's all that all comes to us directly. Yeah, how does pass? I know it's more of a system wide mm -hmm. pass, but the pass that I bought back in March. Mm -hmm. So, um, they, they, they're integrated now, so yeah, you can okay. use it. You can use it. Right. Okay. So if you bought it in March, you can now use it as uh, on all four providers. Yes, great. We provided um, all of our provider, the other providers, a little bit of revenue to allow them to, so that they aren't losing revenue by honoring your March 
uh, March piece. So, but our new day pass is for CAD only and not the region. That's correct. But it still is on token transit? Um, so we have two accounts on token transit. One is called the Gorge Pass okay. and the other one is called CAT. Cat. And okay. so all individual fares go into it, the CAT account um, as CAT. Okay. And that is only for us. Anything that goes into the Gorge Pass, um, we do have a, we, we still earn the majority of the revenue. About 50% goes to the Columbia Gorge Express, which is CAT, obviously. Um, 10%, an additional 10% goes to us. If it's sold through our website, an additional 10% goes to us. So, um, uh, and then the, the, the remaining 10% goes to the other providers. So still we're ten, <laughs> making the largest amount of money. On and this. people purchase the pass, purchase pass, and pass mm -hmm. via the portal on the website. Mm -hmm. Can they also download the app and buy it from there? Or they they can. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can download the token mm -hmm. transit app and buy it. Back. That's correct. Either one. Either one. Okay. And if it same comes, portal. Yes, and if it comes, okay. so if somebody <clears throat> if somebody buys um, a pass, there's also portal links on mm -hmm. the McHead website mm -hmm. or the Mass website. Mm -hmm. So if they buy it through them, they get the commission. So the oh, intent okay. is for for folks to promote their yeah, link. Their, um, yeah. um, and sell passes in their own area. Okay. So that's that's why we do that. And that is something consistent that we plan to do in the Portland metro area. So mm -hmm. we will encourage other um, organizations to sell, like TriMet, to sell mm -hmm. um, the pass on their website. And they, they would get a 10% sales commission for anything that came through their website. So it gives them an, an incentive to actually want to mm -hmm. sell the pass. What's the Matt's website again? Um, it's um, it, it is through Click Attack County. Um, it's okay. probably easiest to get there through the um, Gorge Trans link, but oh, otherwise Gorge Trans link. That's the one. Though. So yeah. Gorge Trans go in circles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gorge Trans link. That's what I. That's what I wanted. Gorge yeah. Trans link um, because that's where you can do the whole route planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. And Patty, the work that we had done with Emily uh -huh. um, to promote the Gorge Pass with like REI and. Yes, um, so that will all launch in November. We are um, keeping a very tight um, um, review of that um, and are an active participant in how that is moving forward. Um, we expect to, um, and can provide you information on the equity fund, which will be a key part of the, um, the pass. So an employer can buy passes for their employees, but then they can also donate um, to low income uh, um, or um, minority access mm -hmm. um, to the gorge. So there'll be, and then a search and rescue component as well. So there'll be sort of an opportunity for folks to donate into the fund. Those funds will then become past purchases. We will get the revenue, mm -hmm. but um, those passes will be then handed out to um, local nonprofits who work directly with those communities. And I'll, I can give you a better overview once that's actually all set up, but that's the intent. And what, what we're hearing is a lot of the businesses in Portland, it, mm -hmm. it's meeting their um, equity goals and their yeah. goals for access. And um, um, so it's a, it's a benefit. So a lot of companies are pretty excited about that, um, as well as buying houses for their employees as a, sort of a health benefit. Yeah come out to the gorge and be active or drink wine, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so you. There's a, a organization called Culture Seed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anybody mm -hmm. yeah. uh, heard of them? I have, actually. Yeah, I just My neighbor used to work mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. increasing access for youth um, uh, to get into the outdoors. And I just think it would be great to loop them into the past. I, I actually yeah. think that I, I'm I, I need Amy because she's the yeah I know yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I, I believe they actually are part of our low income oh. pass program I, oh, I don't know that for sure but okay. um, don't quote me on that but <laughs> I believe that they are cool um, Multnomah Falls I'm just gonna unless anybody has any additional questions about that well pass is that where we are the, the gorge, gorge pass. pass okay no go ahead okay um, um, Multnomah Falls update, we um, helped the Forest Service launch their permit program um, yesterday. Um, we are um, helping with the staffing 
Um, and uh, so far, so good. We've gotten a lot of support from um, ODOT and um, and the uh, Forest Service to um, implement that program. Um, uh, and there's a lot of um, goodwill coming um, at us. A lot of people are very appreciative. Um, we have required as sort of part of that, that that they take on the larger issue of how they're going to deal with um, access and equity and um, at Multnomah Falls and make sure that that whatever we're doing now is has some sort of reasonable planning effort going into it. And um, we're hearing uh, a lot of um, interest in moving, moving that forward for the first time in the five years I've been here. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, All I can picture is, um, it's not the chair, not Arthur, but um, Elder. Oh, oh um, Mr. No, no, no. It's, um, Sorry, I'm in sort of a advisory council. Um, gosh, it's running. I know. He's been at this congestion thing for mm -hmm. like three years, yeah. four years, and like he must be so happy. Yeah, no, yes. and um, um, what's really nice to see is that there are private providers that are now being able to serve. serve. So um, Kent from Bucker, I believe, um, used to be a uh, law enforcement personnel in the gorge, and he started a Sasquatch shuttle oh, and yeah. has seen some really big success in there, mm -hmm. um, as has um, David Duncan. Uh, they just started their um, trolley service on the um, Little false yeah, so yeah. yeah, and they um, they looked like they were also um, doing doing good things. So um, I think there's an opportunity for us to be a support to the um, private providers um, to help them um, meet their needs and um, and get folks in and around the gorge. Um, we're also seeing an influx of tour operators that are coming in, um, and that's another um, great way. Anybody who comes by bus can, we, we're giving out, I love one of those fall stickers mm -hmm. that will allow you into access into the falls um, because because you took transit or a tour bus or whatever. So okay. those are those are advantages. Um, can you review the exact procedures? The exit's closed, right, for 9-5? It is not closed. Oh, um, it says that on the reader board. So, well, uh, <clears throat> so. Right in when <laughs> You, you're required to have a permit to access Multnomah Falls. Um, that permit is a timed permit, so you can you select what time you want to arrive there, okay. and then you can go into the falls at that point. The, in, the intent um, is that um, that should limit the number of cars because folks will um, have to get a ticket, and they limit the number of tickets over that hour to 600. Um, uh, it just began, so there are quite a few people that didn't know about the reservations, and so there were a lot of reservations yesterday that were open. Um, so folks do have to go on and make the reservation, but once they make the reservation, they can go in. It's a dollar to, to get in, um, but it's not that it's actually not a dollar to get in, it's an administrative fee to get on um, the rec.gov site. Um, the issue is not. Um, the issue is really safety, and I think um, you see that all the time, um, that people, um, there's a lot of people coming to the gorge, um, so it's how, to, how do you um, limit uh, some car access at a very small parking lot. Um, it's less than 200 spaces in the parking lot, or um, they have gates that fall down when the parking lot is 90% and close, we have to um, circle around in order to get into the lot. So we, there is a um, flagger that will allow us to go in. Um, so those, those are issues. Um, we, what we've seen, um, as you, I'm sure everybody has seen, is people park on the side of the freeway. Um, I mean, there are stories of people that will pull their kids out onto the freeway. Um, to, to get crazy. them out to, to uh, I mean, people do little very crazy things yes. to do that. So this is an attempt to minimize that um, 
craziness and address what is an ongoing issue in the gorge, which is a lot of people want to come out here and recreate and how do we manage that in a way that um, responsible that and safe is responsible and safe so that's the intent and that's what we've been trying for um, years now to get ODOT to address is how, how do we do that in a different way how do we look to the future mm -hmm. and how do we um, address that so yeah another safety issue is the crosswalk the crosswalk is another large safety issue that's that apparently um, that particular crosswalk has um, the most crossings in the state of Oregon. Yeah, I would say that. Well, I mean, yeah, isn't Multnomah Falls like the most visited place mm -hmm. in Oregon? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's both the safety and it, and it uh, increases congestion because yeah. there's nobody controlling it. And so mm -hmm. if you just have like trickles through all the time of people mm -hmm. walking, then there's no like stop yeah. vehicles crossing <laughs> well i uh i will honestly yesterday uh, yesterday i was out there um watching the action and they do have a flagger out there right okay. now and um that, that guy i swear to god most patient person i've ever seen but i mean i i thought the guy was going to have a heart attack right there yeah. <laughs> it was like stop yeah, <laughs> was yelling at people like and you know trying to hold cars and people yeah. and it was it was crazy but, the anyway. perspective with moment of falls is mm -hmm. that they have 2.5 million visitors go through and get checked in when they go into the lodge itself. There's another almost 3 oh, million oh, visitors that sure. just go to there, take a picture, walk the trail. Right. Right. So yeah, it is It is not that. just a, oh, uh, my God. There's, there's millions of visitors. Wow. And that is the largest than than visited than place than. in the state next yeah, to <laughs> Fair Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a it's an amazing thing, and um, and it has been a conundrum, and it's only going to get worse. And that's one of the things that we've talked with ODOT about is, um, you know, first there was fires, they had to cut close it down altogether. Then they, you know, then it was reopened. Um, then there was um, yeah the um, COVID, and what we're saying is that. You know, this is probably going to increase in frequency rather than decrease, and we need to have a more strategic plan about how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I think the partners are finally ready to do that. So this is the first step. It's not ideal. There are a lot of things that I think that are wrong with what we're doing right now, but um, it, it's the first step. And I think all we can do is be thankful that we're taking that first step. Um, but uh, we got all the position filled, so we're very excited about that. We've got some really great people. Um, Sarah quickly used to work for us, is back helping us with this. Um, she she has lots of experience because she she deals with customer service issues up at Mount Good Meadows. Um, I know that Greg Greg knows her. Um, <clears throat> Gorge to Mountain Service Planning, Don. You want to give a quick. Overview of that? Yeah, uh, we've been working with the Forest Service, Mount Hood Meadows in relation to planning a year round service. Uh, FLAP has opened their grant application process, which is due on October 7th, and uh, we're getting some good uh, consensus from uh, U U.S. Forest Service to help us with that process. We are also going to be meeting with FLAP in this county next week to see how we could better coordinate the Gorge to Mountain Express with the Mount Hood Express service that goes to Sandy. How are you guys going to be um, taking the stops for year round? Um, we were working with the Forest Service. Now we need to work with ODOT. Um, mm -hmm. And as, uh, we'll, as we get clearance, we'll place stops there. That's the best we can do. <laughs> yeah, but I'm assuming like the hot spots like Tamanawas. And... Um, we've asked for spots there, um, Oric. Um, the Sherman Campground. Um, I, I mean, there are issues for the Forest Service on all of those. There is no direct trail from um, Camp Sherman to uh, Tamanawas. Yeah, yeah, but they say Tamanawas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, so if we do that, um, the rec recommendation is not to stop there in the winter, just in the summer, because they're yeah, because um, in the winter it um, you, you have no safe yeah. access exactly. to walk the Sherman. Yeah. Um, so we're we're working with those those issues, trying to work those out. To, yeah, um, I I can't speak highly enough for the I did the um, 
who drove to rhododendron and did the um shuttle from rhododendron up to timberline mm -hmm. uh, timber and then we rode the timberline to town trail oh, uh -huh. and i cannot speak highly enough of that experience it was the free shuttle through august 1st i think and yeah it uh, had like enough room for 30 bikes on the back of this yeah, trailer right. and they're all vertical the only thing is is that we were two women and two daughters and there were 30 men there and we were like the third people at that parking lot three or third group of the parking lot and you know when you're wrestling with like two kids or two daughters we're like okay the shuttle's here let's go men all got their bikes on and we were just like there were no more spots left and i look at two of the pairs of guys that i knew got there right a minute and i'm like about chivalry. You guys be gentlemen. For that. And they just like walked right by, but two other guys heard me say that and they took their bikes off. But Aww. otherwise that it was like an amazing experience. Yeah. yeah. So the shuttle goes from Rhododendron? Mm -hmm. All the way up to Timberline and makes stops yeah. along the way. Yeah. yeah, it's a great companion yeah. to our and, and that's one of the things that we've been working with um uh, Greg and his team at Mount Hood Meadows um about is actually um promoting in the summertime folks parking at Mount Hood Meadows when the, where there is a lot of parking and then taking shuttles or, or, or um, our services to um, key trailheads or bike bike opportunities or whatever else. So that that's one of the things that we've been working on pretty diligently. I mean, even to Hood River, I mean, if they were coming from that side, I, I was really impressed. I've never gone up to Meadows during the summer until a few weeks ago and rode up and hiked was a day that here was super hot and i had a great time and i've never even considered going up there in the summer um, yeah it's beautiful yeah yeah it's, it's yeah no it's 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 so the best way. it's it's actually yeah. the way the forest service even likes it because there's there's actually facilities up at mountain meadows to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. or get something to eat mm -hmm. and um it puts less pressure on some of the more sensitive areas. So we think it's a win-win, <laughs> um, but we also know that there are people that still want to go to other places and the shuttle will, would offer them the opportunity to do to that. To go beyond but, there. Beyond. Okay. And then is there a way that if I uh, took the, if I took Cat up there, would I get a little uh, discount on my lift ticket to go up the hill? I don't know. You'd have to ask Greg. <laughs> <laughs> because I was just like, I mean, I didn't uh, see anybody who was taking the shuttle while, while I was there. Yeah. And I didn't, but I, I don't know why I didn't take it. So what's the incentive? I mean, I can't get my friends to take the shuttle in the winter because they think people are smoking dope on the bus. Oh. And, they're, <laughs> and I can't get them to consider you know waiting for the shuttle in the summer i should have taken the summer well does it, it does it require a northwest forest pass to park there um no, probably, yeah. forest pass. In, in the winter time there's obviously uh you have to have the snow park pass but in the summertime nothing it's forest land but we manage a lot free to park um, oh. it's closed uh, tuesday wednesday so you can park outside the gate we built eight and a half miles of new trails up there that are free to hike or you can take the lift up and purchase $15 in advance or $19 that day. Or if you're a winter season pass holder, it's free. So you can just use your winter ski pass to uh, use the lift in the summer. There you go. So, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but I mean, how can we get those pass, those people that buy those passes to take the shuttle? Yeah, we're we're working on something. Yeah, okay. no, I, I'm trying to get my friends to take the bus with me, but they, you know, we're, we, we, uh, okay. we're we we do not have service up there yet. Okay. <laughs> as soon as we do, we'll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. I think Elsa okay. is trying to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> trying to fix a problem at work over the phone. Oh, it's not working. So I right. can go back to the plan. But thank, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Sorry, yeah. sorry to leave. I wanted to stay for the whole thing. Yeah. But. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much, Elder. Yeah. For everything. Oh yeah. Anytime. Um uh we started the white salmon binge route 
last weekend and the Cascade Locks route went last weekend. And then we also had a driver call um, in and uh, initially um, he called in sick and then he called in to resign altogether. So oh. we ha had quite a busy weekend. Thank you very much to Ty and Jeff who really um, made the day. Um, we were able to maintain service on all the routes mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so uh, really, really appreciated that. Um, I rode the White Salmon Binge and Shuttle um, to the farmer's market with the three of my friends. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a total of um, 10 riders that day and a little bit less um, on Sunday. Um, so I think it's a good start. Mm -hmm. um, we have postcards going out to um, the both community, the White Salmon Cascade Locks, um, uh, Benjamin and Stevenson communities. Um, those should hit next week sometime. So we're hopeful that that will also help to promote it. Um, we are working with the mayors in all of those communities to also mm -hmm. do some social media posts. Um, Mayor Marla, who uh, is at the White Salmon, is very popular. And whenever she posts, mm -hmm. she gets about um, 1,000 people watching her posts. So. Um, we're hopeful. Uh, she's been a strong supporter. Um, same is true with Cascade Locks. They'll be posting um, both stuff on their newsletter. Um, we are working with um, Carrie to identify some groups in Cascade Locks to promote the ridership. Ridership there was not very good um, yeah. and ha hasn't been. Yeah, yeah. Um, though we actually did have a couple of people from Scamania Lodge take the shuttle today um, oh, to Hood River. So oh, we were pretty excited about that. Um, <clears throat> Transit master plan. John and I are um, working actively working to get um, a schedule set up for the engagement plan. We hope to begin that. Um, this fall or early spring next year, um, we should have we have area. Um, we're going to um, do area focuses for di different areas in Hood River County, um, and have associated um, events in each of those counties to get public input. We um, have engaged a um, unique survey method. Um, that is interactive. Um, it's uh, we're still deciding between two different types. One is called Bang the Table, and the other one is called Map Genere. Um, but they will allow you to actually draw um, routes or uh, other other information on the map itself to tell us sort of what you're interested in. We wanted to make, and we will talk a little bit more that about that in the engage, engagement plan. We want to integrate the idea of community into this plan so that we're talking not just about transit but a, about building community in these different areas and how to do that with transit. Mm -hmm. So that is part of the um, transit master plan. Anything else to add, John? Well, we covered it well. <laughs> um, legislative update, um, the infrastructure bill is moving slowly through con um, mm -hmm. Congress. It looks like um, it could be as much of a, as a uh, 50 to 100 percent increase in in transit um, uh, for rural communities. We think that's um, great, and that's why the transit master plan is going to be so important. Is like where do we want to spend the, the first dollars that we have, um, and how do we want to make that work? Um, I think that pretty much covers it for no, no Pete Buttigieg. Um, Darn it, no. no, it was, no. <laughs> we were, we were late at Peter uh, DeFazio because yeah, he's yeah. In the, on the transportation. He, he pulled him down yeah, to uh, sure. LCD to, to be on there. But thank you, Megan, for letting us know. Yeah. I immediately reach, reached out to Blumenauer and uh, and Merkley's staff and uh, yeah, asked, said, is there anything we can do to entice him to come here? And um, they uh, they said next trip. So <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time. Next time. <laughs> it's like a joke in my house. Like I go excitedly over to my husband. Well, when he was working from home, now he's back. But he's like, "What did your crush Pete do today?" <laughs> yeah. Like it's always like some tweet I'm reading. Yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> um, 
I anyway, don't know what I would do if I so we're we're finding <laughs> we're finding that that is advantageous. We are um, watching closely what is happening in the Oregon legislature. They are looking to integrate um, state transportation funds, which come through from um, cigarette tax and mm -hmm. have been sort of dwindling. Um, with the state transportation improvement funds, which are the uh, associated payroll tax amounts. Um, and so we'll see, we we think that the rural county should come out okay. It's probably some of the um, urban areas that have more issues about mm -hmm. integration and losing funds than we do. Um, but yeah, we are look, looking at that closely. Um, but yeah, that's about all I have to Okay. Oh, sure. Uh, air conditioning. Oh, right. It's working very well. We did uh, get a quote for a replacement system. It's going to be about 58265 to basically replace the entire oh, system. Um, and the budget committee recommended a $20,000 budget increase, which was adopted back in June, to do some minor repairs, such as replacing the indoor fan units that have bearings that are fan motors that have bearings that are failing. It's about $1,900. And then to do some um, somewhat major repairs to the system is another $4,300. So it's about $6,200 combined if we just continue to fix while we can see if we can get quotes that are somewhat closer to the $20,000 range. So we, um, we actually think that probably at this point, just repairing the system is the better way to go. Um, we think as part of the transit master plan, you guys are gonna have to make a decision on whether this is an area, this this building is something we wanna um, stay in or whether we want to, um, whether it, as an agency we're planning on growing and would like mm -hmm. to move. And at that point, I think it's probably not great to That's invest fine. huge, make a, a huge investment in, in a building that you may not First, my memory: Who owns the building and property? We do. Okay. Well, um, that's not true. Uh, FTA has a stake in the amount. FTA. Uh, Federal Transit Administration. Eighty okay. percent. So then, if we're thinking of moving, my my thought, just knowing going through a remodel of my house right now, mm -hmm. prices on materials are skyrocketing. Yeah, right now, so Make the band aid repair right now, and then figure out later yeah. what we want to yeah. move somewhere else. Yeah. I think it does, uh, the impact of climate change though, requires more cooling consistently for workers. So it is very important. And the heating is fine mm -hmm. in the winter, it's just the cold air. Um, or the we understand that, I, not that I know a whole lot about this. Um, Ty, feel free to chime in if you want, but, um, <laughs> um, my understanding is that there that it is leaking some um, refrigerant. Uh, yeah, it's in the boardroom that you guys are all in right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's leaking refrigerant right now. Yeah, no, they fit, they were able to fix it, um, but there is a slow leak, and yeah. <coughs> when it goes down, it is not enough. <coughs> it costs us. Um, about two thousand dollars <laughs> each time to refill it, mm -hmm. so it makes sense. It does make sense to pat, try and patch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they they originally when they came out and tried to refill it and fix it this year said it, and it wasn't working for like the first two or three days, like at all. It was still blowing hot air, and then they haven't come back out, but it seemed to fix itself because now it does blow cold air. It seemed like there was some type of clog or something in the system. He said that somebody had put um, some type of sealant into the system to try and fix the leak and then it had clogged it. But after running it for a while, it, it has seemed to be working significantly better. So um, yeah, our recommendation is probably just to wait and see and maybe do some minimal fixes now and then just wait and see how it uh, moves forward. Just stretching. Okay. Patty, <laughs> yeah. right. did you have the... Um, the second minivan on on here. Did you want to talk about that? Oh no, uh, we don't. <clears throat> um, we don't have that on there. We um, have the opportunity to purchase another. We 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 bought the Purple Palace with federal mm -hmm. funds, 
Um, we call it the Purple Palace because it looks like a little big, a little grape. Um, it is a very cute um, dial ride um, vehicle. It allows for one um, up to two wheelchairs and um, four passengers. Five. Uh, so it's four passengers and one wheelchair, or three passengers and two wheelchairs. Um, which is about the more than enough to handle the dial ride. Um, mm -hmm. It's um, fi financially, uh, I mean, gas wise, it's significantly better than the um, larger vehicles that we drive around. And um, we currently use two vehicles um, most of the time for a dial ride. So we are, think that there is some advantage. We can get this one for about $20,000 less than we paid for the last one because it's a, um, Pre, pre No, it's not pre-owned, but they've been using it as a demo. Yeah, it was their demo unit. So it, it has about 3,000 miles on it, but anything that has miles on it can't be purchased with federal funds. It has to be brand new. So they've been unable to, to sell it. If so, we were to sell one of our other vehicles that we're using for that, could that offset some of that cost? It, it, could, it could offset some of the cost. Um, we do have another van that we've been looking into selling. Um, it uh, is still in relatively good condition. Um, it, could, it, it doesn't have wheelchair access, which is why we think mm -hmm. that um, we, <clears throat> having a vehicle that doesn't have uh, that wheelchair access is not the prime thing that we want. And mm -hmm. we can really only use it for, um, for uh, um, a, staff, a staff vehicle or sometimes if we know that the person doesn't have a wheelchair we can use it um so uh <clears throat> so that is an option um and we um also got two new vehicles from odot um cost us nothing they mm -hmm. transfer the title yay valerie um, <laughs> <laughs> um and those are excellent the drivers love them those are bigger vehicles mm -hmm. so we have the opportunity maybe to get a few uh rid of a few of the other larger vehicles that we have so um, we, we wanted to put forward the opportunity. I don't think we're ready. Um, well, I don't know, Ty, you go for it. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want our electric vehicles and the other vehicles that we ordered, but everything's back ordered for possibly still another eight months due to the microchip shortage. Um, last time I talked to Shecky that we ordered so we had two low floor um, cutaways and the two electric Ford Transit van conversions that were supposed to be, um, well, originally supposed to be delivered by late June and then they've pushed them to um, October, but he says that they haven't even gotten the bodies for them on order yet. So he will be amazed if they're delivered this year. Um, so we do have one, two, three, four current vehicles that have quote unquote been replaced by these new buses that we just don't have delivered. And we're sort of the, we're facing a lot of breakdowns because of that. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea is if we could have an additional um, wheelchair accessible vehicle, we could maybe um, use those two vehicles and um, yeah. sell some. So the, the ones that are purchased with federal funds, um, if we sell them for more than $5,000, we basically, the rest of it goes back to the federal funds. If they're vehicles that we purchased, we can sell them and do whatever we want with the funds. So if we buy this van and decide we want to get rid of it, we can sell it and keep all the money from it, opposed to any of the other vehicles that purchase with federal funds, we'd have to give all the money back. Ty, could you make a, a gallery of uh, pictures of all of our fleet for us to browse through maybe in a future meeting or, or maybe just send us a link? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, there, there's basically um, four types of vehicles. There's the, the minivan that has the wheelchair lift. There's the, the cutaway high floor buses that seat between 12 and 18 passengers. There's the low floor cutaways that are three um, wheelchair spots and um, 12 passengers. Then there is the Gillig vehicles, which are the new 
um, ones that we've run around the city. Um, those are about 29 feet long and 30, 30, 28 people. And then there's the ones we just got from ODOT. Um, those are international buses. They're 36 feet long. They seat 35 and hold two wheelchairs. And then there's the motor coaches, um, which hold 55 passengers and are 49 and a half feet long. Well, we don't, we don't own the trolley. Oh, okay. it's, a it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's Okay. Well, I'd love to see just a visual of, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's pretty easy to put together. Yeah. I'd like to table this conversation, have staff come back with mm -hmm. recommendations on how to purchase the $20,000 van that'll accommodate up to two wheelchair accessible uh, riders and then allow for additional people in there and then look at a financial way for selling a, uh, a vehicle. You don't have to give money back to the feds if there's those vehicles that are available that would be replacing you so we don't increase our fleet and sell more maintenance costs. Yep. And we can back to us okay. for approval. Mm -hmm. for plan and approval. Sounds good. We will do that for you. Okay, that's it for us. Okay. So um, I have one really quick thing legislative. Did anybody see the House Bill 3055 that was signed yesterday by Governor Brown? No. It's uh, to the right to bond against future projected toll revenue to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. And then this is from somebody who's obviously against this, but <laughs> so the wording might be hundreds of millions of dollars on freeway expansions. Uh, so it seems that um, the congestion toll that was originally, it was originally framed that way for Portland is now being fully going into actually like the actual toll, which we advised against. And now that toll money is gonna be used to expand freeways when we thought it was supposed to be used to mitigate congestion. Where's the toll, where's the toll being applied? Uh, Metro Portland. Just assessed as a tax or uh, how do they collect it? It's uh, drive through tolling, so. Um, like in other states. Like in other states, yeah. Judge where? Well, so if you enter Port the city of Portland from the, anywhere. Anywhere. And except for 84. Oh, yeah, they can't do it in 84. But um, I five they would. Right. Yeah, I five and two of five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was supposed to be like it was originally positioned as a way to fund transit well, yeah. and active mm -hmm. transportation. And and yeah, so. Anyway, that was uh, uh, disheartening. But um, but the real the real thing I wanted to um, talk about is um, kind of like what we're up against in terms of social norms. Because um, I had a really this is the first time I've spoken publicly about this, and it just happened to me this past month. It was like I didn't even want to talk about it on Facebook because it's just so. It was like a traumatic thing. Um, so I took Annika to the dentist office or to get dental surgery in the Dallas. We took our bikes on the cat bus. And um, by the way, nothing, cat didn't do anything wrong. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to like it. <laughs> no, it's actually, it was an amazing, um, from cat's perspective, it was good. So we got to the, you know, the normal stop, which is um, right behind Home Depot, if anybody's ever been there. Oh, yeah. And unloaded our bikes, biked over to the dental surgery place, which mm -hmm. is kind of like next to the Google um, farm. farm. Um, and she was in and out in 20 minutes. She, a uh, woman came out to me to talk about post-op. And she was like, well, you can pull your car around. I was like, we rode the bus here and she's like we can't let her go unless she gets into a car yeah. and i was like what? why didn't she tell me this and she's like it's in the paperwork and i was like we're taking the bus home mm -hmm. and she's like can somebody come pick you up i was like no somebody cannot come and pick us up mm -hmm. they were like well we can't release her when she's had um what do you call it um Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Yeah. And I was like, mm, 
what a are they lot of about? people have anesthesia every day and they have somebody to take <laughs> care of them and take them on transit mm -hmm. and they're like we can't do that i'm like the bus is like the what's the local the Dallas link, link, link is literally going to pull up right here because it's up right across yeah. from the um, right. port office yeah. and it's coming in five minutes can you please bring her out because if we miss this connection we miss the cat bus back to the river and it's another three hours we have to wait she goes back inside she comes back out she's like we we can't let her go i was like can i please see her yeah. She's like, no. What? Oh, sorry, I was just like getting more and more just like <laughs> couldn't not believe. I thought I was like in an alternate universe. And she's like, we're gonna pay for a cab home. And I was like, this is this is really ridiculous. And yeah, what did you do with your bike? I cab then? right to the cat bus, what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how do you think this makes me feel and or people that don't have a car. Don't have a car. Mm -hmm. And it was just a really awful. I called my husband. I was like, I'm trying to maintain my feelings. This is what's going on. He's like, call the police. I was like, I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, because how can they tell you you can't, can't see your daughter. your daughter? Yeah. He's like, no, call the police. Tell him, yeah. you know, very nicely have the police escort your daughter out here. And he caught he talked to the doctor about it. And um doctor had never dealt with a situation like this before and um they we ended up taking the cab home and putting our bikes in the back but this is kind of like mm -hmm. i tell this story because this is i am like a middle class white woman <laughs> um if this would have happened to somebody else um it's just it's kind of kind of a, a complete mm -hmm. it ruined my week um it was like mom shaming discrimination all rolled up into a nice little package so it's kind of like what we're up against with transit and I mean the irony is that I would actually have been able to care for her better mm -hmm. taking her on the bus than driving, you know. Right. Because you're not yes, driving, you're, you're focused on your daughter. Right. Hmm. And so, what was the what's the reasoning? That they were liable. Yeah, I um uh, when I proceed to Columbia, the paperwork I signed, I needed somebody to be with me take me out of the facility uh -huh. and they clearly serve no public transport. Wow. Oh, see, I've, I've seen the somebody's got to pick you up and take care of you and sign for you, but not in no, a private, private car. car. Right. And but I didn't know they actually viewed you getting in a private car. So that's why it doesn't seem to make any sense. To oh, they, yeah, they were like wheeling, wheeling her out to the car. And I was like, I'm sorry, but this is common sense. Can I just see her? If she's falling over. Yeah. I'm not going to like, Okay, honey, get on the back of my bike and we're gonna go <laughs> to the bus stop. Like yeah. you know, you can't sign something to take responsibility for your child. See, her facts were a little different. That's terrible what happened to you. I don't really understand. That's exactly that. what I signed to. Yeah. yeah. yeah I didn't know I signed it. To. Uh, uh, is that yeah. a change that we need to propose to the paperwork? as part of like their processes or is it something it sounds, higher? It sounds, yeah, I would medical. Yes, something is it something that cats can't really yeah. tackle, but I, it's just in yeah. everyday life that people board, are dealing yeah. with and yeah. um, we're kind of wrapped up in that. So, so what happens to someone who uses dial ride to get such surgery? Yeah. They have to, to find a friend who has a car. Yeah. That's just cool. It defeats the whole purpose of the service. So like the Oregon Health Board or I don't know. It seems like something that should be I suspect this is something common across the country. So I mean, yeah. Like national anyway, I'm not trying to be I don't want to be a downer. It's just with like if there was one <laughs> group of people that you get that story. Get Have you heard this story before? Is this happening? It's never ha I, it's never happened to me, but I um I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, I am trying to think of the last time that um, my, <laughs> my son had um, surgery or, or yeah, or anesthesia. Um, or anesthesia would, our, but, would our drive, would a dialer ed driver be able to be the person responsible? I, I would imagine, I, I don't really understand that one either. I, um, it, it would, it, that seems like maybe that's a conversation to have is like, um, you know, 
I said you can wheel her out right to the link. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. They have wheelchair access. Uh -huh. I can put my bikes on yeah. the, and then they yeah. were like, well, what are they going to do? What are you going to do when you get to the river? I was like, okay, you need, you need to stop now. Yeah. 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 Like, like really, you're not you asking how are you getting hurt? You know, yeah. from the car to your house either. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I drove my bus, I drove my car to the bus stop it's sitting there waiting yeah. for it. Yeah. Do you really know anything else? Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 It seems a little intrusive, but I, I, I don't know that there's anything we can do no, about it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Just, no, I can think I, about ways that we can possibly change that or help that situation. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's just something to be aware of in terms of it. Well, I, I, think yeah. what, I think where we see it probably most often, most frequently, is people who are um, disabled or um, elderly who who really can't do the transfers mm -hmm. and really need direct um, service between their house and the facility. And I think those are um, those are difficult yeah. rides to provide. If, um, we, we do do um, rides between here and White Salmon um, if somebody is a the river resident needs to go over to medical apartments, but um, and we also do some of that. But um, there are issues because we can't get money to pay for those trips. Um, so it's a matter of um, you know we get paid for Medicaid, but if you if you are just above the Medicaid uh, threshold, then you know, mm -hmm. we can't really get paid for those. So. Um, it is an issue in the gorge, uh, in particular, and it's also a lar even larger issue because we're one of the only wheelchair providers in, in the gorge. So there are um, <clears throat> some private providers um, in the gorge that do provide wheelchair access, but most of them are out of um, either Spokane or Portland, so their cost is mm -hmm. significant. So yeah, I um, always wonder if like. The cat or somebody can post a, you know, a medical transit sort of <laughs> forum. Yeah, yeah. forum. We actually yeah. did a two years ago hold a forum, mm -hmm. and that is one of the reasons we we applied for CARES CARES Act grant mm -hmm. to actually provide um, transit service from um, the Dalles all the way into Portland mm -hmm. to the um, Portland medical Which facilities. Is. And we plan to, we plan to implement that this summer, but- um, Including veterans or? Including veterans. Um, um, I don't want to miss my yoga class. Yeah, so no, it's yeah. my yeah. only strength yeah. exercise is yeah. every week, as you can't yeah. tell, I, I'm unable to lift the bar. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm leaving now, but I look forward to seeing you. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, we actually skipped past the discussion I have that John um, was going oh. to lead on the Transit Master Plan Committee. There was a small uh, housekeeping item there that where we needed to Provide staff guidance. needed to guide it, we needed our guidance on whether we wanted two separate committees or one committee um, with the board members and uh, public participants for the Transit Master. Maybe. Is that did I summarize that? Right? Um, so Megan and Letty and I are on that one, and um, we were talking about that. So we have two different committees. So it's whether so there are some uh, members of the public who have voiced an interest in being part of the transit master plan. Mm -hmm. we have, would we like to have them meet with us when we start a committee meeting for that? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. that was my thoughts. Yeah, we yeah. answered it too. Uh, okay. okay, together. Got it. Okay, and then um, we also uh, asked to for John to provide a, a health status update and just let us know how you're doing and how what are, what are prospects for you. Yeah, so um, so the boy to where am I? Had to do a procedure that was intended on doing while I was at the comment, but because of this transition, I uh, pushed it out to June. Up doing that in Colombia, and um, basically with an off colonoscopy. Uh, so I've been having some struggles with my stomach for some time. Uh, they're stating that they're going to have to do some surgery. So I've been doing this process to transition the work, the paperwork from Colombia to a digestive disease uh, facility in Washington, which is done. We have a community with the doctor tomorrow. 
get that scheduled and uh, wrapped up in the surgery process and to be uh, able to return to full uh, duty. So I've requested to work uh, 20 hours uh, during this time period in order to the doctor to my girlfriend as well. Is your surgery scheduled already? I'm thinking that that's what it's about. We wish you a speedy recovery and to do what you get. Yeah, I just need to um, basically change my my activeness and, and the things I do, and also the way I also do this one. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> no one is. You know, did I tell you about my mom's? She got 10 inches of her uh, small intestine removed because of. We aren't going to talk about medical procedures, are we? Oh, no. Yeah, no. She had a gluten allergy and she's still in denial and still oh. eating it. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> so I will be a woodpecker in you. <laughs> yeah, I've got some good feedback on uh, things I could do with a lot of treatment. All right, thank you. Um, are there any other, uh, so there weren't any board member topics that we had uh, put on the agenda when we, when we said it a couple of weeks ago, but um, are there any that other members wanted to add? I just had a quick question about when um, I was helping someone take cat bus and then get on the link to go to the college and we arrive at 7 a.m. at link and link leaves at 7 a.m. Are they waiting to see if anyone from care? It just, they both say seven o'clock. And I just wanted to make sure they're, you know, like if we're and a minute behind. Check, yeah. um, <clears throat> we I, don't, like I don't know the answer to that question never been asked before but um i can find out for you um we uh um they could leave at 705 uh yeah um well i i will ask the question i um we've we've had some issues about um How we match up? well uh, let me let me just say let me Turn this around for a minute. We have been ha um, having some conversations with Link about them actually doing the hood river to the Dallas service um, because we think it offers them the opportunity to potentially um, coordinate it with their local services in a way mm -hmm. that um, they can't otherwise. And it also potentially could offer them the opportunity to maybe add more service um, mm -hmm. than we would otherwise want. So, um, we've been providing that service for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, what we've heard from them is that they've had significant issues finding staff, um, mm -hmm. drivers in particular. Um, and so they're waiting to address the driving issue before they um, look to expand any of their services. So um, we, we have not had similar problems. We you know, seem to keep drivers pretty well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. You've seen them wait for each other, but like the link was a pull up in the Columbia Gorge Express was a pull up. And then somebody would come and walk from one bus to the other and then leave. So, like, okay. I don't know if that's like, oh, well, I think, every stuff. I think if everything worked perfectly, yeah, yeah. that would, I, that's the intent. The mm -hmm. question I think Letty had is, if we're late, like we're five yeah. minutes late, will they wait? And I yeah. don't know the answer to that. Right. We would, in the instance, and we've told folks that, like when we're doing the white salmon service, um, if we're going to be late to, to catch the Columbia Gorge Express mm -hmm. and somebody on the bus wants to do that, they um, will call, mm -hmm. radio call, but we don't have the same radio connection with the link that we do with our own bus. Yeah. That's the only thing I had. Any, any other issues? Um, I, I had a suggestion or a question about um, what are the prospects for our building after um, service schedules and locations? Ty? Is he still on? Um, so, um, so we have, um, we specifically upgraded our um, technology um, to the UNITE program, which is a, a relatively new um, transit program, um, scheduling software program. 
And the two things that we, part of the reasons that we did that is because they um, promised us that there would be an opportunity to um, develop an app where um, instead of handling so many of the dial ride um, trips through the phone, we would actually be um, able, folks would be able to schedule their own trip. And then further down the line, it would be um, similar, with our hope would, would be similar to a Uber or Lyft where people are actually just um, asking for trips and the closest vehicle would be able to pick them up. And all right, vehicle would be able to pick them up. But and then I did that in Boston when I was there and it was just, it was it was really neat it was like the bus version of a, a lift or uber yeah. and it would tell um they did it in kendall square like near mit first and they it would tell the the tech work it was all tech workers mm -hmm. they told them where to go and congregate yeah. like walk two blocks this oh, way yeah. you're all going to be together we're going to pick you up and i was just like yeah. I guess I was envisioning more like what you see with the TriMet app. Yeah, it just shows where's the nearest stop from your location and when's the bus coming. Um, so where, and what's the route? Oh, I just wanted to just mention, um, Amy and I we've been actually been in discussions with a vendor called Transit and Move It. Um, basically, they provide an app that does trip planning and integrates with Lyft and Uber, um, and it can also integrate with our real time, like our AVL through Unite. So we've been in discussions with how we can get them here okay. to integrate our DTFX, our DTFS feed in their app. Mm -hmm. So then we can in theory promote that app at no cost to yeah. I think that would really help our ridership, you know, especially mm -hmm. because our bus stops are still a long way from being really, you know, visible. really visible and you know, the current current schedule is posted and you know, much less dynamic sign would. But um, I find when I'm thinking about taking the bus, I I need to get on the computer to look because if I try to do that on my phone, it doesn't. You yeah, know, our Google website Maps is hard. You don't have Google Maps transportation. That's a good idea. Oh, I that's what that. I always do. Okay, it's okay. Really, so yeah. in that will that will yeah. okay. we're, Well, maybe we need to promote that more because. Uh, yeah, that's you know, amazing. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to the website and like, you know, then I sometimes I'm printing out schedules and then I'm aware that they're changing and it's, it's not their end. And I'm thinking about for most people, they have a smartphone, but they don't have yet a computer, much less a printer. So, so, so we did know, purchase we, and we expect to have, um, we, we had some delivered and we expect to put up on the larger stops, actually real time information. So you will be able to see on um, like down at the port when the next bus goes to um, Portland or when the next bus goes uh, from Cascade Blocks or mm -hmm. even up here when the next mm -hmm. city bus comes. Um, the problem, I think you hit it right on the nail is that we've had a lot of trouble trying to get actual bus stops in the city. Yeah. And um, so, we don't have any poles or we're starting to get some of the poles, but um, we don't have a whole lot of places to put it. So, so. it's, you know, I you see QR codes way more often now, although mm -hmm. we keep the restaurant menus that way, people are used to using their phone to get that. So if we could put those up and it takes us right to mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. people need to see to know what their route is there, I think that would be a good idea. Transit and move it would actually do that for you as well. Okay. We pause up a comment. That's one thing we yeah. did with our partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, put QR codes at all the bus stops, okay. and then if you scan How it, soon? it'll take you to the Move It app, which then allows to show you exactly where you're at and what transit on. You can also integrate back to it. So how do you? It. How soon do you think we can have that up and running? I just uh, email them to check on the status. We okay. just send them our DTFS feed. So okay. they said mm -hmm. it would be it would talk to them about three weeks to six weeks. Okay. Great. Yeah, great. Yeah, I've used that before elsewhere. Somehow I didn't think of it as we yeah, it here. Yeah, their next best version. Perfect. Yeah. So Google, Google Maps All right. are option. Well, um, we're a little over time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, right. All right. And no upcoming events going on number 13. And then we'll move to adjourn. So if we can get a motion, please. Make a motion. Get the updates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second. Good. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned at uh, five forty-six p.m. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Buddy will be leading us next month. Yes. I'm going to be on this week.
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have to be around for 15 minutes. Is that right? That's right. Well, a little bit less. Like yeah, 14 yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Letty, can you stay for a little bit? Um, I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See y'all all next yeah. month. Yeah. 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 Yeah